Hello, I'm Manuela Saragossa, and this is World Business Report. Russian gas continues to flow to Ukraine despite lack of progress in talks to resolve Kiev's gas debt to Moscow and continuing violence in eastern parts of the Ukraine. Since a lot of them have guns, you obviously have um, the potential for a lot of shakedowns. There's one estate agent who had a a gun put in his mouth and coughed over 25,000 US dollars. Also, the youth media channel changing the face of news. So they went to interview the president of Uruguay and the reporter sat there and asked him some relatively conventional questions and at the end of it invited the president of Uruguay to share a joint with him. Plus why a decision by one of America's best known investors to sell out of Ireland is being seen as a vote of confidence in the country. Wilbur Ross invests in companies that are in real trouble. I mean it's like somebody who's in intensive care. When he arrives, you know, it's very serious. So the fact that he's departing they're saying is a good sign. And the value of authenticity, a 17th century self-portrait, has finally been verified as a real Rembrandt. All that and more coming up. First, though, Russia, Ukraine and the European Union are set to resume talks in Brussels later today to try and resolve a dispute over the price at which Moscow sells gas to Kiev and onto the rest of Europe. Moscow had given Kiev until earlier today to pay some of its fuel debts or face a supply cut. But so far, there's no sign that the tap is being turned off. Yet the gas talks come as violence continues in two eastern regions of Ukraine, Donetsk and Luhansk, where pro-Russian separatists have declared independence. Ukraine's new leader has called for daily meetings on the situation involving representatives from Kiev, Moscow and the Organization for Security and Cooperation. Porik Belton is a journalist and researcher who's written for Britain's independent newspaper. He's just come back from Donetsk and I asked him what it was like on the ground there. In Donetsk, it's very tense. The locals are proceeding in an environment where there isn't much news because all of the local media basically have fled. Last week, Donetsk, the the evening newspaper and Donbass newspaper, they both got a visit from separatists with guns saying, we don't very much like your, your coverage lately. They're no longer broadcasting. Most of their staff have fled or Kiev or Moscow. So there's sort of an information gap about what's going on. You're starting to have a lot of businesses close down in Donetsk. There are checkpoints being uh, erected around the city. Uh, There's an informal curfew of 10 p.m. A lot of companies are having trouble getting things. There's a mayonnaise plant there. Can't get vegetable oil. So they've sent all of their employees on unpaid leave. So, But is it fair to say that the economy is pretty much ground to halt in those areas, in those eastern regions? It's largely stopping, and the government also isn't able to collect a a lot of tax from there, which is going to have impacts on the IMF bailout, which is already going to hurt Kiev fairly badly, fairly early on, sadly, in President Poroshenko's reign. And because you have a lot of people with guns going around from slightly different factions, not all of which get on with each other or on the same page... This is among the separatists. There are divisions among them as well, you're saying? Yes, um, Since a lot of them have guns, you obviously have um, the potential for a lot of shakedowns. There's one estate agent who had a a gun put in his mouth and coughed over 25,000 US dollars. A lot of the economy there is dollarized or or in euros because uh, the the Hrivni is depreciating so quickly. That's the Ukrainian currency. It it is, yes. The Crimea has just actually swapped to the ruble since joining Russia. That happened a bit sooner than was projected. So because of that, a lot of the people who can leave, who have family elsewhere, whether in Kiev or even in Russia, are doing that. You have some people, for reasons of inability to leave or civic pride, aren't. So given what you've seen on the ground, are you surprised that these talks are still taking place? Putin does seem to be turning over a bit of a new leaf since the election. He sent the ambassador of Russia to Poroshenko's inauguration. He has not rejected out of hand the new government, the validity of elections. In a way, this is a bit of a surprise. It seems at the moment, perhaps he thinks that he's he's won enough by Crimea, he's got his allies in in the east to, um, you know, to mess things up just a little bit. But as far as the government in Kiev, he's willing to do business and keep the Europeans on side. No one's ever known what the end game is for Putin. He's very good at keeping all of his enemies unstable and off guard. But what he actually wants in the end, it's not even clear he knows. Porik Belton, journalist recently back from Donetsk.